Hello everyone, Top Hat Waffle here once again to continue working on our Counter-Strike Global Offensive competitive level. Today we'll be adding squeaky doors into our level along with a few other door types. We'll add ladders as well into the vent specifically on Metro. And then we'll populate our level with some chickens, the most important part of the game. To start out we need to load the authoring tools to get Hammer started. So under the tools section, under Steam, load up CSGO SDK, followed by Hammer World Editor. Once it's loaded, we're ready to rock and roll. We'll start with ladders since those are the simplest. Over in the vent here, I already have a ladder prop. Creating the ladder prop doesn't actually add the climbing functionality that we need to climb it. We do this using the ladder texture. If we go over to the browse section and then do a search for ladder, we'll get a orange texture that just says ladder. Select that and then create a brush with the block tool in front of your ladder model. After you have the brush created, we want it to come forward in front of the mesh a little bit, then just press Ctrl T to tie to an entity. We want our ladders to be function details so they don't split any viz leaves, kind of like what we talked about in the optimization tutorial. Now let's go ahead and compile really quick just so we can check that out in game. Here we are in game, we'll just walk over to our event and when we walk into the ladder, we use it. Or if we jump into it from the ground, we also grab it and can climb up. Now let's go on to create a single door inside of this door frame. We'll start by creating a new entity with the entity tool and then change its class to a prop door rotating. Just like with the prop static or prop dynamic, we have a world model option. Double click on that to bring up the model browser and let's do a search for door. If we scroll down and choose Metal Door 001BR, this is the door model that will break and we can preview its broken pieces and states right below it. Let's select that and rotate it like a normal prop and put it into the doorway. With the door in place, we'll notice that we have this little blue ball down here. If you cannot see this little blue ball, make sure that you have helpers enabled up here at the top. This blue ball represents where the door will rotate around. By default, it'll be placed on the back side of the prop model where it will logically have hinges. If you are using a different prop for the door, you may need to manually set this. Also, do take note that only certain door models have a breaking animation when you shoot them. If we scroll down, we'll see that we have a few options for moving. Let's double click on fully open sound and then do a search for door. I'll just use the nuke sound set that we have here. I want full open one, fully closed, moving sound. And I also want to set the unlock sound down here to be door unlocked. If we want this door to break, we need to go to the Flags tab and then choose Start Breakable. Let's click Apply and then Compile so we can take a look at that in-game. Here we are in-game, we have our door. If we press E on it, it opens. If we press E on it, it closes. By default, doors will always open both ways and they open away from the direction that you're using them on. If we start to shoot at this door, it will eventually break and pieces will fly off. This is due to the start breakable flag that we set on this prop door rotating. Now let's create a set of double doors that will open together. Let's start by copying this single prop door rotating and we'll come over to where I've installed a double door frame here. We can start by positioning one of the doors that we paste into the door frame. Then let's shift drag this door over, rotate it around, and also put it into place. Since both of these doors will be opening together, we need to assign them each a name. Under the name section, let's give this a name of doors underscore one. Let's give the other door a name of doors underscore two. Back on doors one, we want to select the slave name section and choose the other door. So doors two is a slave to doors one. The slave name will make it so the doors mimic each other. If one door is open, the other door opens as well. This is how the double doors in the bottom site of Nuke are set up. 
Now let's select both the doors and configure a few other parameters. Let's set the speed on these doors to 180. Most doors open faster because it's better for gameplay. We can also set the rotation degree. This is how many units the door will rotate. By default, it's 90. Let's set it to something lower like 70. If we scroll down again, let's look at open direction. This is what I was talking about when the door will open away from the player. Let's set it so these doors will only open outward into the bombsite area. Since the doors are rotated around, we need to set one door to open forward and one door to open backwards. Let's select doors one and change this to only open forward. Now let's select doors two and change this to only open backwards. Let's click apply and compile so we can see what that looks like in game. Here we are in game. If we go and open these doors, they both open in the direction that I didn't want, but they're opening the same direction. So all I would need to do is go in and flip those. So the one that's opening backwards opens forward and the one that opens forward opens backwards. These doors also don't open the full 90 degrees, which can be interesting if you say have some props behind here, like the door got stuck on them. These doors also open much quicker than the default speed of 100 since we set that value to 180. Now let's take a look at a sliding door similar to what is in CS Office. I figure we'll put the door right here and we can start by grabbing our no draw texture. This door is going to be made out of a brush. So let's grab the brush tool and create the brush that will fit the doorway. And once that's created, we'll just grab a texture that fits on it. The new roll up door seems pretty good. We'll throw that on both sides and also on the bottom. Then we'll bring everything back into existence and press control T on it and change its class to a funk door. You'll notice we also have the option of funk door rotating. Funk door rotating is just the brush version of prop door rotating. So if you wanted the door to rotate, use funk door rotating. For this instance, since it's a sliding door and it's only going to go up and down, we'll use funk door. Let's start by giving this door a name of sliding door. Under the speed, let's set its value to 150. We also need to set its move direction. Since this door is going to be going up and down, I can use this little drop down here and choose up. If you want your door to move in a different direction, you can use this little direction picker here. Now we want to set the lip. By default, function doors will move the full width of the brush in the direction that they're moving. Since this object is 144 units tall, it will move 144 units up. I don't want this brush to end up being on the same exact plane as the ceiling. In this case, I'll set the lip to four. This will have the brush stick out a little bit from the top. In essence, we're subtracting four from its total move distance. So this brush will only move 140 units. I'll also choose a start sound and a stop sound. To make this door a little bit more interesting, let's go over to the flag section. Let's uncheck touch opens. As of right now, there's no way for this door to open itself. Let's use a button to open this door instead. Let's create a small brush on the wall that will serve as our button. With our brush that will be our button in place, press Ctrl T on it. Change its class to Funk Button. Under Flags, check Don't Move. If we don't check this, the button will disappear into the wall after we press it. Under the Outputs tab, click Add, and then choose On Press and select our sliding door. Under V this input, select Open. This will tell the function button that when unpressed, so when we press the door, we want our sliding door to open. Let's run the map so we can see what that looks like in game. Here we are in game. If I walk up to the door or press my use key on it, it doesn't open. If I come over to my button and press E on it, the door will open. Five seconds later, by default, the door will close. I can visualize outputs being fired in my level if I open my console and type ENT 
message draw one. This will allow me to visualize all outputs being fired. It's useful for debugging along with the developer two command. With developer two, outputs are tracked in the top left hand corner of my screen. Now, if I press E on it, I can visualize that that open command was sent. I can also see it in the top left of my screen because of developer two. Now let's go ahead and add the most important entity, the chickens into our level. There's two ways to spawn chickens and we're gonna of course go over both. The first one is to have the engine automatically spawn chickens in our level based upon the navigation mesh. Let's create a new entity and we're going to change it to an info map parameters. Under the info map properties, we have a few items here. One of these that I didn't cover earlier was the C4 explosion radius. If you want, you can use this to adjust the bomb radius if it's too low or too big in your map. Typically 500 is the default and you always want to go with that since that's what most players are used to. What we're interested here though is pet population. This sets the target number of chickens in our level. I'll set this to 10 and this means that it's going to try to spawn up to 10 chickens into our level. If you set this to larger values, that does not mean that you're going to get that many chickens. I won't get 10 chickens out of this. I'll probably get something like 4, 5, 8, maybe 10 once in a while. This is an up to value. The next way to spawn chickens is manually. If we turn our little park here into a chicken playpen, let's place a new entity and we're going to change this class to just chicken. It's going to be a purple black missing texture since this object is missing its definition in what's called the FGD file. The FGD file handles all of the entity definition and information for hammer. Since it's missing the chicken entity, hammer falls back to the default missing texture icon, which is what we have here. But this is going to work once we're in game. So if we just spawn a whole bunch of chickens here by copying this a bunch of times, once we compile and check that out in game, here we are in game. Here is one of the chickens that I found that the map has automatically spawned based upon the target number of chickens. There's another one over here as well. If we keep flying through, we'll just see them scattered automatically throughout the level for us. If we come up to T-Spawn now, we have our little chicken farm here and they're all clucking away from our manually placed chickens. If someone's able to give me 11 herbs and spices, we're ready to make our own KFC. I hope you enjoyed learning how to add some simple doors to your level along with a button controlled door and basic ladders. Hope you also enjoyed learning how to add chickens into your map. Thank you for watching, we really appreciate it. Remember, think before you shoot, save a chicken's life one round at a time, and join us tomorrow for the next one.